Thank you for your introduction. Before starting this talk, let me express deep gratitude to organizer Professor Ahn for having me this talk here. Um, I mainly study on algebraic combinatorics, in particular distance regular graph theory and spectral graph theory. Uh, recently, with my three co-authors, we proved the finite theorem on distance regular graphs, that is so-called the Banaito conjecture. Hence, today, let me introduce that result. As you know well, many problems on real world and mathematics can often be formulated in terms of symmetric relation on a finite set, that is a graph. But however, it seems no hope for complete classification of all regular graph or, or all finite graph. However, the situation may change if Regularity, regular properties and symmetric properties are assumed to exist. Many regular properties and algebraic structures can be expressible in terms of distance regular graphs. Distance regular graphs is one of unifying concepts in algebraic combinatorics containing algebraic structure. It contains algebras, so let me introduce <laughs> later. <laughs> And let me introduce our outline. First, let me introduce what distance regular graphs are, and then let me introduce the Banaito conjecture and its background. And then after considering diameter bound, we will prove the conjecture. And if we have time, and then let me comment for the result and conjectures. As you know well, platonic solid is a regular solid such that all of faces are congruent to regular polygons and the same number of faces mirror every vertex. And there are only five platonic solids. That one. And they have highly symmetric properties. And in particular, all they are distance regular graphs. And distance transitive graph is main subclass of distance regular graph. A connected graph graph gamma is called distance transitive graph if for every four vertices with the same distance x x y D gamma UV, there exists automorphism of gamma such that tau x equals y and tau u and tau y equals v both hold for any distance. That is the definition of distance transitive graph. And distance transitive graph is main subclass of distance regular graph. And also, both of them are regular graph. And in 1983, by using complete classification of finite simple groups, they proved the Sims conjecture. And then, by using their proof of the Sims conjecture, they succeeded to prove this finite theorem for distance transitive graph. And from classification of finite simple groups, they proved the Sims conjecture. And by using this result, they proved the finite theorem for distance transitive graph. And our main result in this talk is this finite theorem for distance regular graph. And here, let me introduce Sims conjecture. Sims conjecture means let G be a. Uh, so some people mm. don't even know the balance. Mm? Some people don't even know balance because we use degree here. So. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but maybe my students don't know the balance. Ah, balance? Oh, okay, yeah. degree. Yeah. Okay. Balance is degree. Mm. And G is a primitive permutation group on a 
finite set omega, uh, let me denote to g sub x is the point stabilizer, and d of gx is the orbit of any gx orbit in on omega minus x. Okay, then seems conjecture means there exists integral function f such that the order of point stabilizer group is bounded over by f of dgx. Okay. This is since conjecture. And by using that one, they prove the graph theoretical result. Because the definition of distance transitive graph is needed, the automorphism group. Okay, so if we consider such automorphism group as primitive permutation group, and then we can use such a kind of bound to bound the balance uh, diameter. And also, on conversely, from using algebraic combinatorics, we can also conclude some information in group theory, such a kind of automorphism group. And then, why distance regular graphs are interested? at least to me. Distance regular graphs contains rich examples. For example, as, you, as I saw, the five platinum solids, and also many well-known classical graph family. Yes, can, you, yeah? can you say again, what is a distance, distance regular? So you define distance transitive. What, what is distance transitive? I, I will define later in okay. the next okay. section. <laughs> so now I'm just going to some overview on, on our talk. It contains rich examples such as Hemming graphs, Johnson graphs, and Grassmann graphs, and bilinear forms graphs, and so on. There is very classical family in algebraic graph theory, and it contains algebras, not only obsessive algebra, that is commutative algebra, but also non-commutative algebra, tabular algebra, or sometimes we say sub-constituent algebra. Hence, Distance regular graphs enable us to study other combinatorial objects with the language of algebra. So in that sense, also DLG is interested. And one more thing is many regular, uh, many graphs with regular property are distance regular graphs. So let me show one example. If we consider all regular graphs with smallest eigenvalue, at least minus two, then in 1976, they show that except one class, this one's class is line graph of some graphs, except one class, any regular graphs with smallest eigenvalue at least minus two is either DLG or substructure of DLG. So people are interested in such a kind of problems. And also the spectral uh, characterization of Hemming graphs is uh, interested to many spectral graph theorists. And recently, we show that if we fix the diameter as three, and if the base set size is at least 36, and then Hemming graph is uniquely determined by its spectra among all regular graphs. And then there are some applications on theoretical physics, computer science, and so on. And then now, let me introduce what distance regular graphs are. Before that, let me introduce one simple example. This is three cube. Then let me consider this graph again from another viewpoint. First, let me fix any base vertex, say x1. Okay, then let me consider this Vertex set as distance partition with respect to the fixed base vertex x1. And then we can consider this distance partition. And this first column consists of distance one neighbors of the base vertex x1. And the second column means the set of vertices which are the distance two from the base vertex. And that, the last one is the distance three vertex. And also it has diameter three, as you know, the antipodal points here, and we have three columns. Moreover, this partition has very special property. For example, 
any vertices in the same column has the same number of vertices in every direction. For example, here, every vertex in here has unique neighbor in the previous column. So for first column, let me note by this number as C1. And zero neighbors, A1 neighbors in itself, and two neighbors in the next column, that is B1 neighbors. And similarly, for this column, any vertex in this column has exactly two neighbors, C2 neighbors in the previous column, and zero neighbors in itself, A2 neighbors in itself, and B2, unique one neighbor in the next column. And this is just one, so we don't need to do. Even though we change the base vertex, like y2 or x3, we have the same distance partition, and also we have the same parameters, c i a i b i. That is the definition of distance regular graph. And also this is one typical example of equitable partition here. And this explanation uh, gives a combinatorial definition on distance regular graph. First, fix a vertex x and consider distance partition like this way. And then, given kinetic graph is called distance regular, if for any column, i's column, there exist three constant, c i a i b i, such that any vertex in the same column has exactly c i neighbors in, its, in the previous column and a i neighbors in itself and b i neighbors in the next column. Then from this definition, these parameters, C i, A i, B i, does not depend on the choice of vertices. They just depend on i, that is, distance from the base vertex. And these numbers are called intersection numbers. So given graph has diameter d, then we have exactly d columns, and each column contains unique triple. C i comma a i comma b i. Hence, if d is diameter, and then we can write exactly d triples in here. Of course, some of them are the same, and some of them are different. We don't know, but we can have these d uh, triples. And now, let me consider this definition again in terms of matrix theory. A connected graph gamma is called DRG if the following equation holds. Here, A sub I means square matrix whose rows and vertices are indexed by the vertex set, and its xy in entry is 1 if the corresponding distance is i and 0 otherwise. That is, we call the i distance matrix, and uh, well known. Uh, this is matrix is A sub 1, as you know well. And then if we have this equation, matrix equation, and then we say such a graph gamma is distance regular. Then this equation implies that any I distance matrix can be expressed as a polynomial of degree I in a distance matrix A sub 1. What I mean is, let me show one example. Then, if we take i equal 1 and then a1 square is b0, a0 plus a1, a1, and c2, a2. And usually B0 means balancing. Hence, for this three cube case, three A0 means zero distance. So we say this is identity map, identity matrix. And A1 is here, we said zero. And C2 is two, so two, A2, right? Am I right? Mm. So, do you assume the graph is regular, or mm -hmm. do you do you have to assume the graph is regular, or do you have to do, can you 
deduce from the definition? Yes, from that one we can deduce. Ah. Because this constant AIPICI does not depend on the vertex. Just We just said. Mm. Uh, B0 and on. Ah, here. Yeah, but that mm. doesn't say anything about. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. then, then let me. Mm? Maybe I'm not understanding the question. Doesn't regularity just mean that the first column is always the same? Yes, yes. that's the. the, that's, the yes. Same yeah. That is You're degree. All of the columns are always the same. No, no, no. Mm. Okay. Oh. Uh, here. Here. How could we <laughs> obtain regularity? Mm. Let me consider later. So, here, if I choose i equal zero, and then how about? Yes, yeah, something. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. so we need, uh, so actually uh, we need to give some condition more explicitly. Yeah. Or, or some of AI BICI, if some of AI BICI mm. is same, then you can say it's mostly mm. regular. Mm. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Here, if I if we choose, of course, so if P sub minus one, we we can put as zero. Okay, and if we take i equal zero and then a one equals what is that? A one small a one capital A one plus c two a two, right? Here a two means what is a two? A sub two. Distance two. Then if we consider the diagonal entry. And then we can get some, some balancing, isn't it? Zero, one, zero, no. I, I think, uh, one way is, no, I, I get it. So oh. you just start, so you want to say, let's say, you want to say it's degree of y is something, mm -hmm. constant, then you just uh, look at the neighbor. And mm -hmm. if any neighbor start from there, mm -hmm. then the degree of y is simply sum of uh, uh, a1, b1, c1. So it's constant. Yes, that is constant. Yes. yes. So that means it's regular. Ah, yes, yes. Ah, okay. Right. We can choose base vertex. So oh, your, what is your exact question? From this matrix equation, can we deduce the regularity? Is yeah. that your question? Yeah, my, my question is whether or not the degree is the same by the vertex. Ah, okay. Okay, at this moment, let me assume the regular graph, okay? Uh, and let me consider <laughs> later. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, from this matrix equation, the one of important property is the ice distance matrix is expressed as a polynomial of all distance matrix of degree i. That is our, my main point here. So if we calculate a sub 2 and then we get a1 square minus 3i over 1 over 2. Okay. In that sense, we can also obtain a sub 3 as a polynomial of all these matrix of degree 3 and so on. So from this matrix equation, we can uh, obtain many properties. And also, as I told before, five platonic five solids are distance regular graphs, and we have such a kind of triples also. That is just the one simple example. And these five platonic solids have such kind of intersection triples and so on. And also the usual polygon is trivially distance regular. And then from the definition, distance regular graph is regular graph. Then let me give one example which, which is regular but not distance regular. This later graph is three regular cubic graph. 
but this is not distance regular because if we take two different vertices in the same column and then this vertex y has two neighbors in the previous column but this vertex z has unique neighbor in the previous column so two vertices in the same column has different number of neighbors in some direction so it cannot be distance regular then now in this section let me introduce the Banaito conjecture and its background as I mentioned many times distance regular graph is regular graph with degree k then one of natural question is for given any positive integer k are there only five many TRG with given degree or infinite many? First, let me consider existence problem. For any positive integer, does it exist, uh, exist some TRG with given balance? The answer is yes. The example is Hemming graph. Hemming graph HDQ means this diameter and valency D, uh, valency is D times Q minus 1. So whenever we take any valency and then we can take any positive integer D and Q. So we can always construct DRG with given degree K. Then the next question is finite theorem. That means here given condition is valency K. So to show this finiteness, we need to say that for any DRG with given valency k, the number of such vertices is at most some number. That means some number means some constant which depends only on given valency k. In the next section, we will see that this inequality, to show this inequality, it is enough to find another function g which bounds the number of first triples. Here, S of C1, A1, B1 means the number of first triples. And the number of first triples play an important role in the theory of distance regular graphs. So in, uh, from now on, let me denote this number as H. H is abbreviation of head. So we usually denote H. And then let me consider this basic question for the base step. Base step is k equals 2. Then k is 2 means regular graph with valency 2. Then there is trivially polygon, right? And then we consider odd polygon and even polygon separately. Then ci, ai, bi, that is the number of vertices. So there is non-negative integers and the sum of them are valency k. So we fixed k equal 2. Then this triple must be one of such three candidates. So to consider, even though the number of three candidates are finite, but to draw polygons, we need to add length function on each triple. What I mean is to draw odd polygon, and then we need to add length on the first triple as diameter minus one. And the last one, we need to give length value to this triple as one, and D triples and one triple here. And for even case, also we have these two different triples. And to draw this even polygon, and then we need to add length value on the first triple as D minus one, diameter minus one, and this is just one. Even though these candidates are finite, but we can give any length on the first triple as large as we want, okay? We can draw polygon of diameter 100 or 1000, whatever we want. That means for given valency k, we cannot bound length function, length value on the first triple. That means we cannot bound the diameter. That means there are infinite many vertices. So for given valency k, there are infinite many distance regular graphs with given degree. Moving on, how about the next case? So the length hmm? is, so you're trying to bind down the, the diameter? Yes, yes. Uh, it, this number must be total d diameter. Hmm? Hmm? 
lengths. Sum of all lengths is equal to diameter. And length, what, what is length? Ah, length is here. So uh, if we consider distance partition here, ah, yeah. ah, and see. for each column, we have corresponding unique triple. Right. And for fixed base vertex, we have exactly di diameter columns, D columns. And for each column, we have unique triple. Hence, mm -hmm. the number of triple is diameter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Total number. Okay. Hence, this is the last one. One, one, the next column, zero. And this is one triple. And for this one, every column has unique neighbor in the previous column, zero neighbor in itself, and unique neighbor in the next column. So this triple must be d minus 1 times repeated. So we cannot bound this length. Okay? We can give any length on this triple, and then we can always draw big cycle or small cycle as, we, as long as we want. So we cannot bound the length function. That is the point of our proof. So there are infinite many such DRG. Then how about, but as you know well, K is 2K is very trivial and very simple. Then how about the next case? That is the Banaido conjecture. In 1984, in their book, Algebraic Combinatorics, they conjecture that for given integer K, which is bigger than 2, there are only five many distance regular graphs with given degree K. And recently, we showed this conjecture is true. So we will talk about this result. Then first, let me uh, consider one typical example, case three case. Then C i a i b i is non-negative integers, and some of them are equal to balance degree three. So we have only six candidates. And then by using these six candidates and by adding length function on each triple, how can we construct distance regular graph? That is our motivation. And in 1986, by using some combinatorial technique, circuit tracing problem, uh, techniques, Big C at all, they proved that there are only 10 plus 3, 13 cubic distance regular graphs. And also they showed this kind of triple behavior. And 3 cube I, I already showed, and there are 10 different graphs. And they also bound the number of each triple must be finite. And actually, the large one, the longest one is five here. And mm, I, I still mm. don't understand the drawing. Mm. So what's Can you draw one graph corresponding to eight? So you have a two green dots and two yellow dots. Ah, so I just give colors with the same triple. So, this is just, just I just uh, <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. tied the partition. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, three times three times one is diameter D. Okay. okay. And first triple is one zero two, and the second triple is one one one, and it must be repeated exactly three times. So initially it started with the one zero two, one zero two, one zero two. Yes, yes. Okay. This is first column. Okay. in distance partition. So, and this page shows some known results before our result. And 93, they showed classified cubic distance regular graphs and four, and then the rest is concerned of our Banaito's conjecture. And in their series of papers, in their four papers, they showed that showed the finite theorem on distance regular graphs with valency at degree 3, 4, or all bipartite distance regular graphs, or under this condition they proved. And actually, recently, we also, in these two papers, we deeply considered in this conjecture. But uh, just using this one, it is some gap to prove whole theorem. So we need some consideration on distribution of eigenvalues. So at that point, let me focus on this talk. 
Then in this section, let me consider diameter bound. After considering diameter bound, and then we can simplify our conjecture into simpler form. And then we will prove the conjecture. Let me consider diameter bound for any regular graph. Say, gamma be a connected regular graph with degree k and diameter d. And then the number of vertices is at most this amount. Because if we consider distance partition again, and then first fix any vertex x, then first column consists of exactly k vertices. And then the second column has at most k times k minus 1. And the ith column consists of at most k times k minus 1 to the i minus 1 vertices, and so on. Hence, for any k connected uh, k regular graph, the number of vertices has this amount. We have the upper bound in terms of k and d. Hence, to show finiteness, we only need to find some function f which bounds the number of uh, the, the, which bounds the diameter in terms of valence k. Okay, so we to show finiteness theorem, we only need to find one function which bounds diameter. So that uh, conjecture is reduced to diameter bound problem. And then let me focus on this diameter bound for particular distance regular graph. And then there are very special diameter bound, so-called Ivanov bound. A.V. Ivanov conjecture that diameter of DRG may be at most constant times, degree times head, the number of first triple. And in 1983, A.A. Ivanov showed this upper bound. But this is K lies in exponent place. But anyway, he got upper bound in terms so of... So hmm? the number of first... Yes, the first, yes, first triple. And also, but uh, people wondered whether can we move K from second floor to first floor. So at this moment, the, the best well-known uh, bound is this one, but we did not succeed to get linear case. We just did K to the 1.41, something like that. Hence, for regu distance regular graph case, the number of vertices is bounded above by this function from regularity. We already saw in the previous page. So we have the first inequality. And by using Ivanov's or our diameter bound, diameter must be bounded by valence k and head h. So this is bounded by function in terms of k and h. So to prove the finite theorem to finite conjecture, we can finally simplify that conjecture into this problem. Find such function f on balance at uh, degree k, which bounds the head from above. That is our goal, and we will prove this inequality. We will find such function f. And then we can prove that conjecture. But actually, several steps are involved to prove this conjecture. So let me split that proof into seven steps. <laughs> Uh, first step is sequences. First, we define two different sequences. Actually, this sequence is motivated by uh, parameters C, I, A, I, B, I of distance regular graphs. Let two integers, kappa and lambda, be given. And then G plus 1 distinct triple is called kappa lambda graphical sequence if the following inequality holds. Actually, this inequality holds for C, I, A, I, B, I for distance regular graph. So we just motivated that inequality and we defined the graphical sequence. But these triples are different. Hence, we need to add length function on this graphical sequence. So by adding length function on each triple, we define the tridiagonal sequence. And moreover, the same triple must be appear consecutively. But this consecutively appearance is uh, easily obtained from this inequality. So actually, that is the same statement. 
Here, let me note that here H head of tridiagonal sequence T means still the length of the first triple. And also, from any distance regular graph, we can always construct such graphical sequence and such tridiagonal sequence. Then, for given integer kappa and lambda, how many kappa lambda graphical sequence does exist? That is finite because this sequence G consisting of different triples. So that must be finite. If we consider polygon case, then two. Two equals CI gamma I plus alpha I plus beta I. So then finite choices. So the number of such graphical sequence is finite, but we cannot bound the number of length function on this graphical sequence, like polygon case. That means for tridiagonal sequence, we cannot bound the number of such tridiagonal sequence. Then, because we said for given, uh, for given distance regular graph, we can always construct graphical sequence and tridiagonal sequence. Then let us construct such sequence. Trivial case, still add polygon, even polygon. And then we have this triple sequence. Then the for odd polygon case, graphical sequence is consists of these two distinct triples. For even polygon, we have this one. But to construct the tridiagonal sequence, we need to add length function on each triple. And then the length function, the length value must be d minus one, one, d minus one, one, like that way. That is the construction from given distance regular graph. And also we can also construct something from cubic graph. And then the second step is we need to consider crystal numbers in orthogonal polynomial theory. And actually, uh, original crystal numbers in orthogonal polynomial theory in continuous version, but we are combinatorist. So also they, there exist the discrete version. So I just note by crystal numbers in discrete version here. This screen means here we can define orthogonality from this symmetric bilinear form by using summation, not integral, like that way. So first, let me define tridiagonal sequence like that way. But the entry satisfies these equalities. And then we can also define these polynomials. Vix is a polynomial of degree i defined recursively by the following equations. Then, in the theory of orthogonal polynomials, it is well known that this matrix has n plus one distinct eigenvalues in the closed interval bet, beta zero and minus beta zero. And if we construct this tridiagonal matrix from tridiagonal sequence, then the eigenvalues of this matrix are called the eigenvalues of the tridiagonal sequence. Then this polynomial Vix are orthogonal polynomials with respect to the following uh, symmetric bilinear forms, like that way. And for each eigenvalue, theta i, we can calculate this number. And these numbers are called the corresponding numbers of the corresponding eigenvalue theta i. Then how can we apply this Crespin number to distance regular graph theory? Let me apply that one. Mm. Like it might be a distance regular graph with intersection numbers C i, A i, B i. A, B, a previous one is gamma i, alpha i, beta i. So we can construct this tridiagonal sequence and then we can define such polynomials Vix and then we can find d plus one distinct eigenvalues of that matrix. But in the theory of distance regular graph, it is well known that the eigenvalues of distance regular graphs are the eigenvalues of this matrix. They are exactly d plus one distinct eigenvalues. Here it is diameter. And also we can define crystal numbers. Then in Bix formula, Bix showed that for each distinct eigenvalue, d 
this classified number is exactly equal to the multiplicity of eigenvalue. But this page, this observation is very powerful because whenever we want to calculate all the eigenvalues of any graph, and then first we need to construct the adjacency matrix. And then we calculate the eigenvalues of the corresponding adjacency matrix. But that matrix size is the number of vertices. That is very huge. But if that graph is DRG and it has diameter, and then we can just construct the D plus one by D plus one small matrix. And then from this theory, by calculating, just calculating the eigenvalues of this matrix, we can find all these all distinct eigenvalues of given distance regular graph. But the size was n by n, but d plus one by d plus one. Even though we know the all distinct eigenvalues, how can you construct multiplicities? That is crisp numbers exactly. So from using, the, just by, from considering this small matrix, we can find all eigenvalues and all multiplicities. So in that sense, this formula is very powerful. Let me give one example, three cube. It has eight vertices. So I just divide it into first floor and second floor, and just, I just gave, gave colors, red and green. And then to calculate all the eigenvalues, we need to consider eight by eight matrix. But if we use the previous observation, and then we only need to consider this four by four matrix because it has diameter three. So after calculating this matrix, and then this matrix has four distinct eigenvalue, three, one, minus one, minus three. And this multiplicity is calculated from the crisp numbers, fixed formula. And then let me note one simple statement here. And of course, all of you already know that any regular gravity degree K, the eigenvalues must lie in this closed interval. And also, the eigenvalues of any graph are algebraic integers because its characteristic polynomial is monic polynomial in integer ring. And any two algebraic conjugate eigenvalues of any graph must have the same multiplicity. That is very simple. But from this simple property, we also define one property. We named property AC. For tri-diagonal sequence, this is not related <coughs> to distance regular graph. We just defined just the general sequence. For this sequence, two eigenvalues which are algebraic conjugate must have the same Christopher numbers. So this property we define the property AC. So later we just consider tri-diagonal sequence satisfying this property. And then we can apply to distance regular graph in the end. Hmm. And then let me prove the Vanito conjecture. It, it is just one page here. I prove whole thing. But to do that, the main key of this proof is main theorem A. So theorem A means let two integers kappa and lambda be given and some graphical sequence be given. Then for any length function which satisfies tri-diagonal sequence, if we satisfy property AC and diameter bound, and then head H must be finite because here kappa lambda g is already given, so head must be finite. So in the uh, rest of this talk, we will prove theorem A. So now let this theorem A be proved, and then we can use this theorem to prove our conjecture. Our main uh, theorem is this one. So let me fix one positive integer k, and let gamma be any distance regular graph with given degree k. This is given any distance regular graph. And then from given gamma, we can always construct tridiagonal sequence T sub gamma. And then this tridiagonal sequence came from DRG. Hence, it satisfies property AC because any 
graph has the algebraic conjugate eigenvalues must have the same multiplicity. So, and this diameter bound came from Ivanov bound. Okay? And we already observed this one. For given integer kappa, the number of such integer lambda is finite. That is trivial. And also, for given finite number of integers kappa and lambda, the number of such graphical sequences is also finite. And then we can apply this theorem. By taking maximum among all such prop, uh, constant h in theorem A, and then we can get the constant depending only on kappa. And h is bounded by kappa. And then the number of vertices is bounded by this one from regularity. And from Ivanov diameter bound, we have this inequality. And from this observation, h is bounded by m kappa, so some constant only on kappa bounds the number of vertices. That means for given any integer kappa, the number of vertices uh, is finite. That means this theorem holds. That's, that's the proof. Then we need to prove theorem A. That is the remaining work. The key idea of the theorem A is the following. We just considered distribution of eigenvalues. For given graph, we can always calculate eigenvalues exactly. And then we know it, their distribution exactly. But if we do not fix graph, then even though we know valency, even though we know degree, we cannot expect distribution of their eigenvalues. But fortunately, we were able to find some distribution of algebraic conjugate eigenvalues in some spatial interval. That is very local information. But that information distribution of eigenvalues imply, enable us to prove the whole theory. So to study such distribution, first we need to know some result or number theory. So let me introduce our one theorem in number theory. P sub kappa B, the set of all irreducible monic polynomial in this integer ring. And I sub kappa zeta means the set of all closed intervals of length zeta in this closed interval. And we defined upsilon kappa zeta is the supremum of such fractions for all P and for all I. Then in theorem B, we can prove that for given integer kappa, this limit must be zero. <laughs> then let me first uh, prove this theorem briefly. That is very simple. Like kappa B integer, and let me pick any polynomial P and any interval I here. And then what is P sub kappa? P sub kappa was the set of is it is a monic polynomial, okay? Then it has n distinct roots, say alpha 1 to alpha n here. And then we are also of generality. Let me denote t root alpha 1 to alpha t are the roots inside given interval i. And then we just consider the discriminant of those algebraic numbers. Discriminant means let fx is a polynomial with rational coefficient of degree n and f be a extension field of rational field it contains n distinct root of this polynomial and then Trivially, if we consider distinct integer case, if we consider these things, and then it lies in extension field, okay? But this is called, we say, discriminant. But in that case, discrim this discriminant must lie in the base field, too. That means this number must be rational number. 
but IIIJ is already algebraic number. Rational number and algebraic number must be uh, integer. So this is all they are distinct. That means positive integer. Hence, it must be at least one. That is key point, but very basic, but that is key point here. And then let me split this product into two parts, inside interval and the rest. Inside the case, what is the di difference among them? Difference is the cardinal, the length of this interval. The length is zeta, so zeta appear here. And if we consider rest one, and then the difference between any two roots here is kappa and minus kappa. So there is and most to kappa. And then there is some exponent term, but we just calculate some way, then we get also this inequality. And then by taking logarithm on both sides, and then we can get the following inequality. That means half upsilon kappa zeta is less than or equal to this number. And by taking limit, we can show this limit holds. And we will use later. And let me introduce one more inter interesting property, well-known property, interlacing one. Let A is a square matrix, which is similar to real symmetric square matrix. And eta i's are the matrix uh, eigenvalues of the whole matrix. And theta i's are the eigenvalues of the matrix obtained by removing the i's rule and the i's color. And then theta i's interlace those of the original eigenvalues. Okay, that is called interlacing property. And a typical corollary of this lemma is any eigenvalue, the eigenvalues of any subgraph of original one interlace those of eigenvalues of the original graph. That is the typical example. And one more lemma let me introduce here. This lemma ensures some e existence of some eigenvalues of the whole matrix here. If some length is at least three, and then there exists the eigenvalue of the whole matrix L sub one, which lie in this limit. So from this inequality, we can say that if L is long enough, and then there are many eigenvalues in some limit. And this limit, this cosine must be lying between minus one and my plus one, hence minus plus. So from this inequality, to ensure the existence of eigenvalue of the original one, we need to focus on this interval, i sub i, here. And this number is denoted by frac l i, and this number is denoted by frac l i. And we will focus on these intervals. And then one more main theorem is theorem C. The sequence R i, this is R i, the sequence must be unimodal and R i must be at least R1 for all i. From this unimodality, I can draw the sequence R i like this way. But unfortunately, we cannot expect the shape of the sequence L sub i. So let me draw the sequence L i arbitrarily, so in this way. And this green line is called well-placed interval. Some closed interval with positive length is called well-placed interval if the following holds. I must lie in the range of the sequence Ri, and this closed interval I does not contain neither Ri nor Li. And there exists some I containing I. Then such closed interval is just well-placed interval. So just to consider some special interval that is well-placed interval. And then we can show some, some approximation of Christopher number. From using the three-term recurrence relations, we can found some bad guys. So we gave name as a bad root. And then such guy cannot be infinitely many. So first we show that to calculate crisp numbers, there is some bad guy. They made the situation difficult. And we show that 
such one must be finite. And then we show that we can always take well-placed interval, very good interval, which does not intersect such bad guys. And then we can consider crisp numbers. Then in such well-placed interval, for any eigenvalue theta in that interval, we can always approximate the crisp numbers in the following way. And as you can see, this bound, upper bound and lower bound, is very symmetric. Li, Li, some, some product, the same product. But the difference is here, 9 kappa 4, 1 over 9 kappa 4. And of course, the constant is different, but constant is constant. So we, have, we can approximate crisp numbers. That means we can approximate multiplicities. We don't know exact one because we didn't fix any graph, so we cannot calculate multiplicity exactly, but at least we can bound. That is our point. And then from this approximation and the limit result in number theory, we can show the following statement. The statement means if H is large enough and some parameter is small, and then any conjugate algebraic numbers must be close, as small as we want as close as we want here. And also by using interlacing property, we can say that we can bound the number of eigenvalues of tri-diagonal sequence in that good interval, like that way. So anyway, we got some uh, distribution of eigenvalues of tri-diagonal sequence in the following way. And then we can prove the whole theorem. So we divide it into two cases, gap is small or gap is large. And then first let me consider gap is small case. And then by using the previous approximation of the eigenvalues, we can show this limit equals infinity. But in our case, that the, the number of eigenvalues of tridiagonal sequence is equal to t plus 1, and we assume the diameter bound. We have this one, but even though we have the number of eigenvalues is finite, but this limit means if h is large enough, and then the number of such eigenvalues must be large, but it cannot be, so h must be small, like this way. So in other case, how can you do? That is this figure. So this green one is well-placed interval. If some parameter is big, and then we can take another well-placed interval higher than green line. And then we will prove the case one again with the new well-placed interval i prime instead of i and then we can proceed inductively. But our basic property is this sequence is finite and this sequence is unimodal. That means we cannot go higher, higher, higher because we need to stop in somewhere. We don't know, but we just know in finite step, this procedure must be stopped. So that is the idea and this means that I just called induction step. So, by using that one, we can say that in the final step, the case one must be satisfied. That means we got some upper bound for the head. So, we prove the theorem A and the following, the, the following argument, we can prove the main theorem. And before concluding this talk, let me focus on my point in this proof. In the beginning, I said that distance transitive graph family is the main subclass of distance regular graph. And also, for both family, finite theorem is proved. But in this family, they showed finite theorem by using classification of all finite simple groups. But even though DRG is larger class of DTG, we did not use such huge or such difficult theorem. 
We just calculated or we just expected the distribution of eigenvalues in somewhere, not whole way. We, we cannot expect the whole distribution. But if we consider the local structure, uh, local area in the whole interval, and then by considering such algebraic conjugate eigenvalues behavior, we were able to find the final theorem for distance regular graphs. So we did not use many combinatorial properties or graphical properties. So if we consider more on combinatorial properties on this proof and some graphical information on this proof, and then we can expect a stronger and very interesting result in the end. So let me stop here. Thank you for your listening.